So who wants to get this to start? My name is Lawrence Delva Gonzalez. Drum roll, please. I did get married back in November, so I'm still getting used to my ha hyphenated name, you know, whatnot. But ultimately, welcome to the Financial Grill yet again for another episode. I'm not going to say the number of the episode because, you know, at this we point, you already know. <laughs> like, you clicked on it. You in. You doing your thing. And obviously, uh, we're going to talk about money, but ultimately, the Financial Grill goes beyond that. We talk about personal finance, we talk about, you know, mental health, spiritual health, and even relationships uh, that we get into, either relationship with ourselves, with other people, or relationship with our families, and so on and so forth. So the idea of a griot is a person that tells stories, and we're incorporating that in the title of our podcast, and this is what you're here for. So we're going to be talking today about relationships and money. Move and back. obviously I'm the married one. I'm gonna get some like married perspective, you know, some some you know, Kevin Samuel-ish stuff. Honeymoon-ish. Oh, you Lord. know, you know, it is what it is. Get some real stuff. And then we have the, the people dating in the game. So y'all still in, out there in these streets dating. Or at least hey, if y'all if you ain't married, y'all single. You're dating. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So what's up? Who wants to actually kick it off? I know I have my co-hosts here. So I want you, you know, go ahead, say your names and what you about. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. <laughs> My name is Atlanta. Um, thank you so much for tuning in to the TFG, the Financial Grio. We're here sharing our stories, sharing our experiences, but also just giving you guys, um, you know, just a way how we express ourselves. We want to kind of expand and open up the gates and platform for everyone else to hear our personal conversation this is what we do <laughs> we have these conversations on a daily basis so we're just expanding to everyone else so uh thanks so much for tuning in hey everyone it's lovely Mardellis here i can't wait for this episode some dating and some money and relationships it's gonna get spicy mm -hmm. no i'm gonna be civilized though i'm gonna be civilized <laughs> uh, and no ranting this episode i am going to bring my toastmasters you know so lawrence doesn't call me out i could be a civilized member of the team before they kick me out um <laughs> but so bad i just, you know, I just say sometimes you, know, you get real passionate I do, I do. It's the hard. We're Haitians. We are. We're, we are. You know, more passionate. <laughs> I can't. I can't. But no, seriously, this episode is gonna be fire because um, I, I, I would love to see like um how Lawrence talks about his transition. Was there much of a transition? What did he learn? Because you know he's a married crew, and we're gonna just give him so you know already in this one because he's you know dated and he's a male. And me and Atlanta are like the women that look at the men like, so what's what's going on with y'all? What is going on doing? with y'all? Y'all finances because I got a lot to say about men and their finances. But we're gonna be civilized this episode. So Atlanta, um, there's something about a date or something that happened. <laughs> so can you give us a tea? Of course, you, of course, you put me out. <laughs> You are a tea. A Thank woman. you. You've been a woman version of Lawrence right now. <laughs> of course, you're putting me out. Um, yeah, so that happened. <laughs> uh, so uh, I recently went through a breakup earlier this year. So um, I decided to, after that little hi hiatus, I guess, um, decided to just start dating again. I met this really cool guy. <laughs> For some reason, I, I think I told Lawrence this before. I'm not sure. I'm always attracted attracting uh military guys air force marine like mil like army like, for some reason it just happens right but um yeah recently went on a date uh took him downtown to uh las olas yeah las olas for lauderdale downtown we had a great time um i think one of the things that intrigued me about this particular person not only does he have a cat like me <laughs> i'm not the lonely single cat woman right um, but uh, we also talk about budgeting and money, right? Um, he is not from this country. Uh, he is black from the motherland, so I'll let you guess. <laughs> I'm not going to be particular. Um, he's not from here, but um, we look at money a little bit differently. Now, I, I like the way that we are really transparent discussing money. Um, and I'm really surprised how, you know, when we finally got a chance to meet in person, how comfortable we are 
with each other, discussing money, but also just discussing like our plans in regards to money career wise and what we see ourselves and also like what success looks like with or without money too. Right. So, um, yeah, I like him. We had a great time uh, for his first time in Florida. So I had to be the tour guide, give him the the, the blast <laughs> of South Florida. So, um, yeah, I, I had a great time. So that's that's really me right now in the dating scene. Um, and I, I have an, another date coming next weekend. But, you know, stay tuned. <laughs> well, Y'all yeah, not seeing the wait, way. Wait, like, wait, wait, wait. Pause, 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 pause. Date with the same person or another date with a different person? It's getting real... Uh, that's, uh, it's- Another day with a different person. Another oh. day with a different person. Okay, so this this was okay. This 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 particular person. No um, I call him. Let's call him the coder. Since he codes, <laughs> let's call him coder. Um, this particular person, uh, we we kept in contact for a while. It's been months. So his family is from his family. He has some family in South Florida. So he's making that that jump from um from Georgia to South Florida. So he's trying to buy a home or something he's trying to do. We just kept in contact. Um, he expressed interest and wanted to get to know me, even though sometimes our communication is a little bit, you know, far in between sometimes, but he has been trying to stay consistent. Um, so it'll be pretty cool to, to see him in person a lot of video chats from here and there, but we'll see. Just, I'm just enjoying, you know, dating, get to know somebody. So that's, that's really what it is. So we'll, we'll, we shall see. <laughs> can we talk about Atlanta being two times? We can give Atlanta a hand clap for all the ladies for, <laughs> you know, actually not just, you know, putting her all her eggs in one basket. Because, you know, women are often harshly judged for, you know, talking. and they, Lauren, don't give that look because maybe it's not you, but you, the streets be talking. So <laughs> I just. Right, right. Go, go, go ahead, lovely. No, yeah. I thought I've, I've been amongst the people that talked about it. I'm, I could be honest about that. Like, I'm not gonna sit there and call, you know make myself paint, paint myself to be better than uh, well, paint myself to be like Derek Jackson. That's not my style. Like, I say it straight up. Um, I did date a girl once. Uh, I I thought we had chemistry, or we could have chemistry. So uh, I was taking after like a, a theater performance in DC. We went to like a restaurant, and I, you know just casual conversation you know just to get to know her and she said she was I guess she she volunteered this information I just kind of let her ride out with it that she was um dating multiple people at one time I think she wanted to be clear with me you know that she was dating multiple people but I'm I was looking at her like personally I don't date multiple people that's not my bandwidth that's not the way I operate um because you can you can't really remember who is truly for you and the discernment gets a little bit complicated in my opinion uh in that time it was a general turnoff because I'm like okay so if it's between me and somebody else then choose him I don't care I don't compete (laughs) I'm a non-compete dude like you either you want me or you don't you know me it's like when somebody does this like calibration like which one is better whatever it is I think that's kind of it's not really I don't know. I don't. I never find personally. I didn't. I didn't find it like um, beneficial. Right. So that's um, I, and she's still single now. So <laughs> my my thing is this because I dated guys who dated other people as well in midst of dating me, and I do not mind because I'm more or less of um, if you don't tell, ask me, or tell me we're exclusive, I'm not going to assume that we're exclusive, right? And I'm also not going to assume that you and I, are the, you, I'm the only person that you're getting to know, quote unquote, I'm doing my air quotes right now. Um, <laughs> the only person that you're getting to know. Um, and also there's another spectrum as well is um, I, I have jumped into relationships pretty, pretty quickly. Whereas like maybe one or two dates, hey, let's get in a relationship. I'm a cancer, I'm a water sign. <laughs> I, love, I, I love love, like I love relationships. I've always been in like long-term relationships. So I, I love relationships, right? So um, I, I've been in that spectrum as well. But what I have noticed is that if I don't take my time in getting to know someone, then a lot of times it just burns in my face or it just doesn't work out, right? So if I, I come into a situation where if, it's so, if someone is, is generally expressing interest in me, then I will always, I come to, as I got older, come to the conclusion is you are seeing other people. If you're not blatantly communicating with me that 
we you would like to be exclusive with me let's try to get to know each other um you don't know where i'm at but you like to kind of see if we can be exclusive and you like to just genuinely want to you know get to know me only then maybe i will fall back with others because i see how serious you are and focus on you but for the time being i would just assume unless you communicate with me I'm, and, and and to be quite honest i'm not telling these guys like i'm dating other people i'm, I'm assuming they think <laughs> i'm dating other people uh you know so um that's that's really where i'm at and i also want to be clear too is that um unfortunately when some men think that women are dating or like multiple guys higher situation may be they think we're sleeping with all these multiple guys that's not true you know, so that's that's also a, another um, biases in, in 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 you know negative stereotype that some men may may think it's it's not that at all. I'm just genuinely get to know these people. I'm not flying out here like they're coming to me, <laughs> or they're in town and we're just having a good time, um, showing out some spots, and that's pretty much it. Whatever goes from there goes from there. But I, I would say this is that some men. Some men may not be as intentional, right, when it comes to dating. If you are genuinely interested, I'm just going to place myself in here. If you're genuinely interested in me, then express that. You're genuinely interested in me. You would really like to see what it will fold to. Like, if you want to tell me, like, hey, you know, I really want to focus on you. I hope you feel the same way then I may be all in because I'm, I'm such a, you know, open person. And if you tell me that and I know where you are, then I'm just going to flow with you, right? But if we're just getting to know each other, you seem a little bit unsure. I may be a little bit unsure, <laughs> right? So I, I, flow the same, I flow the same way as you, but it, it's just right now in this space that I'm in. Mean, and again, I just got out from a, a year relationship. So I'm not, quickly trying to jump into something so if we're getting to know each other in hopes of you know getting to a relationship then i'm fine with that as well right so um i mean at this point i'm i'm, I'm seriously dating one person don't don't think because i'm saying like i have another date you know but i'm seriously no, dating I, I, one I get i get it i'm not saying <laughs> that it was anything wrong i think ultimately the maybe the way that you're doing it and approaching it you're just basically being open and receptive to to see which which person is really going to go forward. I think there's a lot of other women that I ran into in my lifetime and my own personal experience that were really vetting one guy versus the next, which is like, yeah. almost like, yeah. like, which, which one is better? I, I don't know which one I'm gonna pick, but let's see, let's see who outwins the other one. I think that level of like competition, one is just odd. Cause I wouldn't necessarily pit one girl versus another, like, Oh, which one is doing more for me? It's, it's like, it's not a box of cereal. <laughs> like, it's not like, it's not what this is. It's not a video game. This is not whatever. And, and her interpretation is it was very flawed because she stated that guys are doing that all the time. And I looked at her as like, I grew up, I'm a guy. I grew up by a guy. I know a lot of guys and majority of guys aren't doing this. So I'm not too sure where she got her, her information about dudes, but nine times out of 10, most guys are not dating multiple people. Most guys only get likely, even I think there was a study that was done. A lot of guys probably sleep with an average, maybe two people in their lifetime. And women were like, how is that? Because a lot of guys aren't the, you know, there's some guys that get a lot of play from a lot of women. You know, I don't know where you get turns. that study from, but I'm pretty sure it's skewed. Hell yeah. No, but Hell I'm, 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 Hell let, let, me, let me continue. <laughs> let, me, let me give you the reason. Let me get the good reason here. Because for, for one, a lot of people that went to college is different, but there's a lot of people that did not go to college, whereas, you know, they didn't have the same experiences where, remember, we were tossed in like Tallahassee, you know, it was just a whole bunch of young people. So people were just, you know, running them up. But imagine all the other people that didn't make it to college. They didn't have the same quote unquote opportunities to kind of, you know, uh, date all the time and very often. Some people just married that one person out of school. Some people married, you know, the person maybe uh, six or a year later, and that's about it. So the amount of sexual partners that they might have had, it's not as much as you might believe it to be. It's only because we grew, we were in a college town. We perceived okay, our, differently. Our, our, our experience is a little bit different from the, yes, okay. from the average. So that's the average. the average. Additionally, even in college, there's a lot of college guys that weren't getting that much play. There are, yeah. there are very, there's some people that are remotely 
super attractive guys and girls, right? You, you know, the more they turn into a corner, everybody looks, everybody knows them, everybody knows who their, their name is, whatever it is. Those people typically get majority of the, the attention. So when a woman like that comes into a room, generally the guys will stop, we'll get really creepy and we, we won't say a word. It get really quiet. That's just the way guys are. It's just something that, I don't know, it's just the way that we all are. I don't care if you're black, white, Asian, Hispanic, it's the same thing. Uh, However, when a woman comes, when a guy comes in and has that level of appeal, a lot of women are fixated on him versus we're not necessarily fixated on just the, the beautiful, the most beautiful girl. Like that's not how we shoot our net. Like when we go hunting, we don't just go hunting for the prize deer. Like we go hunting for any deer that comes out of nowhere. <laughs> it's just like, if you're the deer that came out of nowhere, you're the prize deer today. It is what it is. But a lot of ladies go go hunting for the buck, the legendary stallion, the legendary thing that didn't right. exist out there. A hundred, he makes a hundred thousand. He says he's he's six seven. You know, I don't know. He's a he's a, a giant amongst men. Ow. <laughs> like, but a lot of women are shooting for that, so therefore they're not giving the same opportunities to every guy that's not. So right. let's say out of ten, there's two of those guys. Those two guys might be dating multiple women. And all those women are getting their information from dating those two guys. So yes. they're like, oh, obviously all guys are dating multiple women. That's a lie. There's a guy ain't getting no play. There's a lot of guys going right home right after the, the party, whatever it is, and they ain't getting nothing. So that's, that's kind of what I want to throw out there. I know you want to talk about it. Go ahead. Yeah, I will say it's um, in, in my experience as well, because there's talking, they're dating, you know how black culture is more in talking, like um, distinguishing talking and dating, right? So I'm talking, I'm, it's only in communication where we're texting or we may have a video or a call, getting to know each other, you know, the whole text message. I will say this, and I don't know how lovely if you want to pitch in, I'm not sure what you're experiencing with dating too. I can talk to multiple guys multiple guys like who have my number right I guarantee you just like that um you know that example that you mentioned about the you know the buck and the deers and whatnot I could guarantee you that most guys and, and just been in my experience eliminate themselves before I can eliminate them so before you know this particular person came down to visit there were others <laughs> And it would just be in a communication, like texting, maybe a phone call, maybe face, I don't know. I, I forget. It's all blurred at this point, right? So there have been multiple people, but what I look for is consistency. That's where I look for is consistent communication with someone who's genuinely interested in me. Not only they're expressing that, but the actions align what they're saying as well. And for the most part, out of those ex verbal of, of guys, two or three maybe standing or maybe one <laughs> you know because I don't I don't I don't look out and I don't try to chase the ones that you know that you mentioned the unicorn six seven and whatnot you know I'm, I'm not chasing for that like I, I'm at a point in my life like I, I search for not search I attract consistent men who are positioned and want the same things that I want Say that right again. so you can have my number. I'm pretty sure whoever has my number, my number hasn't changed. <laughs> whoever had my number, but if it hasn't been a consistent way where you're aligning your actions with what you're saying, then most likely we never had a date. It, it never even got to that point of a date because I, I know where you are. You have to discern that as a woman. I really know where you are. So don't think that, you know, we're texting Monday then texting, you know, next week, Sunday, that you may have a date with me. You probably won't. That's the same thing I would you, you know, last few weeks, you guys, uh, well, especially, um, especially uh, um, Lawrence, uh, the Hispanic. <laughs> it's, uh, where, where are you from again? I not where he's from. But anyways, communication, it, it just was just too far in between where it doesn't seem like it aligned with what I'm looking for and what I want. Right, I, I don't need inconsistent. I don't need inconsistency. I, I just don't. So most times, men eliminate themselves. And, I and, say and sometimes, that. And, and sometimes I think is because they have options. This is my my experience. They maybe talk to other people as well, and their attention is somewhere else. Not to say that's solely their attention, 
um, with other women, maybe it's their life or job, whatever, you know, that's going on in their lives, but they eliminate themselves. <laughs> like, I like, I, I don't have to do no work. I just like, let it go. Let, let it just be free. And it just, it always work the way that I that I'm explaining it to you like 90 98% of the time it happens that way so that's why I never kind of fret like he may be fine and sexy and whatever it's just like yeah <laughs> you know it's like it's, it's cool because it's intention is elsewhere then he eliminate himself and I have to do less of the work you know and that's fine with me that's where I'm at so it's, it's, it's different variables it's, and the, the spectrum is different when it comes to relationship but I have now come to understanding that I, I could talk to you you may know my name you have my number but it most likely it may not lead to a date and a lot of time I'll say unfortunately probably up to seven over 50 or 70 percent of the time it does not lead to a date like we would not meet in person there's not there's nothing in that <laughs> and it just you know, communication or text messages or whatever. And I'm fine with that. Like, I'm not for everyone. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. chocolate is it's not for everyone. So you may have a, you know, underlying condition. I don't know. So that's, that's really... <laughs> <laughs> underlying condition. You I don't might, know. You, you I might want to get checked. Chocolate. <laughs> you might want to get checked. a lot of chocolate. So, I mean, that's, that's fine, too. So um, you, you can talk to whoever you, that you want to. Like, as I to multiple people yeah i think i think it's fine i'm not that's what i said i, I did not even want to say that it's like somewhat like your strategy is um uh, bad i just think i i just wanted to dismiss the fact that a lot of guys are always dating around because women are getting that assumption and it's typically from the the very select dudes that they're dealing with nine times out of ten so change that idea because not every guy yeah. is doing that not every guy is you know wants a woman that does that and ultimately, some people just want to listen to you and see you and, and talk to you, just you, just so you really for you, for you to get a chance to accu- accurately vet them. Maybe your right. process works, Atlanta. I, I believe that. And on top of that, I did want to add something that's very sensitive to a lot of guys that I've learned over the years, right? It's really relationships are about money. It's about, Ooh. you know, if you don't got the cash, women have, I've, I've noticed some women, you know, maybe not all women, but they have a very subtle way of letting you know that you ain't shit. <laughs> like, if you don't got the money. Speak it on the Lawrence, because I know you had some toxic experience. Bring it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up. He's making his way. Lawrence is making his way. He's like, I'm priming, he's the, I'm priming the audience, <laughs> you know, to, to <laughs> let the audience to know, you know, that Lawrence has cool. some, okay. you know, pissed up issues back in the day. Okay. okay. Yeah, I was back in, okay. Let, let me get back in it. <laughs> <laughs> then you get it so basically you know money is very sensitive for guys not having enough money and I, i've heard it growing up that women's like oh yeah you know we could go on picnics we could go on bike rides and whatever trash trash <laughs> like majority of women like by, well it's not just by proxy of the women themselves that you try to date it's also their friends it's also it's a social environment that we live in and the media that we consume that some women get their information or their val- social validation from others. So therefore, if you went on a date with them and it was a great time and maybe they had a great time, they're going to be like, hey, girl, I went to this guy. I went to this location. That one girl said, nah, he trash. And they'll just take his, um, I guess, their information as gospel, mm-hmm. right? It's almost yeah. like, hey, you know, you're better off shooting your shot with somebody better. So I did date multiple women in the past and in nine times ten, it kind of ended up because somebody else could provide them with a better life, which basically mean take them out more, you know, spend a lot more money on them, get the bag, you know, per se. And that's really what society is pushing on a lot of young ladies now is the idea that they need to go out and find these people that's going to like wine and dine them and to their detriment. Because there's not one, if you want to find a guy that you can build with, he's likely not going to be spending money just for the hell of it on you, you know, you know, willy nilly, you know, it's not, that's not the way you build actual wealth. Uh, on top of that, some guys will look at you, maybe at that point, you, you're literally just prostituting yourself. Let's be, let's keep it real. Like it's just sex for money at that point, And you may as well just be a prostitute. Just, and if that's not what you're trying to do, then, you know, you might want to change it up. And for guys too, if you can't take them out on dates, you can't, you literally can't get engaged to women nowadays because the engagement ring itself 
it's as as little as you can get it, you likely still will pay around like five grand, right? And and average? if you pay five, no, not saying average, I'm saying as little as you could probably get it, you could probably get around like five grand for an engagement ring. It's still a lot of money. Like, look at your face when I said five grand. You got to think about five grand. Like, it's a lot to just spend on a ring. It's not even the necessary thing. It's likely a blood diamond. Who the hell knows? But ultimately, <laughs> it's, it's probably wrong. It kind of destroyed the motherland and a few kids probably died from yeah. it. But the women be like, mm, but I kind of want it because everybody else has it, right? So on top of that, the wedding itself on average is around like 28000 if not more. That's a lot of money. And to make that decision to get engaged, to get married, to be honest, it's a financial decision that a lot of Black guys, um, you know, because of not being either being underemployed, um, structurally unemployed, or unemployed, you know, the, we don't have the the amount of cash to to really say, well, we're gonna jump down this broom thing, and also I'm gonna take care of you beyond that. Because women are gonna look at guys; they literally do. I don't care how stable a woman is; she's gonna look at guys like, so what are we doing? <laughs> like, well, I, we need a car, or we need a house. Like, it's, it's almost like, so where do you think money comes from? We all have to work in this environment. We all have to provide. And I think that it's a, there's a death of the single income family that actually mm. happened in today's society. It has to ultimately a dual income at the very least. Right. You won't be able yeah. to live a middle-class lifestyle without it. It just doesn't really exist. Yeah, you could probably get a guy that's making hundred stacks, but between two, you're, you're spending at least 58K you know, per year minus all this and that. You're probably living right up to that limit. The average yeah. um, income is like 87,000. The average expense is like 68. That's 87,000 before, or 82, or somewhere around like the 80s, 82 or something before taxes. Right. And then it's pretty much neck to neck. You're basically living from paychecks to debt. That's it. And a lot of right. women don't understand that. You know, I'm just speaking from a guy's perspective. A lot of ladies that I ran into don't understand that aspect. And they just think it's all about what they see on TV. That is glitz, glamour, travel, bags, and, and getting dressed. Yeah, we 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 talked about that on many occasions. You made some you made some great points, Lawrence, uh, about that. That we want the um, someone's son, right? The hashtag someone's son. <laughs> yeah, which sounds we like want... a, a statutory rate. That's what that sounds like. Oh my, yeah. So we 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 want that image of living this luxury lifestyle, but not understanding monetarily what that actually uh, means. Right. So with this particular person, um, the one I'm seeing, he had to travel down, not only pay for a ticket, but also pay for hotel expenses because you're not about to be in my house. <laughs> right. So but um, in, in terms of, of money, like I understood what he had to take financially coming to see me. So I didn't mind paying for drinks or I didn't mind like uh, the last dinner he was here is paying for the dinner so but in between that time there were times where he just paid for everything else right but i'm i'm okay to go into to relations and dating to say that it's not necessary to want and dining i'm really more looking into how creative you are you know like if, if it's something that you are willing to uh, pay for but us other times you may be looking into something that you want to do together that's cool with me. I'm really more of the quality time, but I do see how you know social media and the influence of luxury um, and having the you know um, Instagram looking guy, perfect looking guy, can kind of fill into that void. But I'm all about quality. Like I really just want a quality. Like, do you got a job? Do you live with a roommate by yourself? Like I'm looking for the basic. <laughs> Are you sustainable? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> you mentally you got a fine. Job. You know, live with your Are you not trying to kill me while I sleep? <laughs> like you are okay. Like I don't mind pitching in. I don't mind paying. Like you know, because with or without you, like this is what I've been doing. This is an adult, <laughs> right? Uh, but I, 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 I do see that influence that it's really hurting women. That's why we have the high value men and looking for these certain types of men and all this other stuff where I feel bad for the other men that are not <laughs> them. Like we, we, we're eliminating this whole pool of men that are wishing to be, you know, having a conversation about taking us out, but we eliminate because they don't make a certain amount of income. And let's be clear, let's be clear. 
because I feel like I feel like people don't really uh, distinguish the the income. It's your gross. Your gross can be six figures, but what do you take home? What is your net? <laughs> like what what do you actually take home? Right, and I think that's what we have to discuss and talk about because, like Lauren said, if you're living from paycheck to debt, then it's not a lot of room for an extra person when you're trying to wine and dine them. And the real, um, I, I think the real problem, the issue comes when you're trying to build a life together and everything else has been uh, smoking mirrors and you're dating or courtship when you're not seeing those things in between the time. Right. So um, I'm, I'm transparent. I want someone to be transparent with me. I'm transparent with the person that I'm seeing. He know how much I make. I got an idea how much he make. Uh, but I'm just I'm, I'm just happy he's sustainable and he's open to discuss the money with me and career prospects and potentially making more money in the future. And I'm fine with that. Like he's he's an adult. He's sustainable. I can work with that. <laughs> you motivate me. So I'm cool. Right. I think one of the things is like you're not the average. Right. So you're you are pretty much looking at the person for more than just their paycheck or who they are and looking at the the, um, sustainability of the future by saying, are you sustainable? Are you mentally already? Are you open to have the dialogue? And I think there is what I call like the, um, the smoke and mirrors where there is a lot of people that are looking for the, the, the storyline where we can post together. And, and really it's not P-O-S-T, but pose. Like they want to pose, not mm. post only. So it's like we're making this high value man into the same way we would make a late, we would get a package of Legos and literally create this, 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 uh, to, um, this, this, like this high rise building with the Legos, right? But it's a Lego. It's fake. It's not value. It's not, it's a pseudo thing. It's not something that you can really actually go out and say, can you, can you, can I trade this asset for something? And so I would love for more of us to start looking at assets that are long-term, that are um, beneficial, like character, like integrity, consistency. Do you even keep your word? Um, I think Lawrence alluded to this earlier there is a style of man that then there's a hundred women after that one type of man because he's 6'2", he has a Ferrari or a Porsche or whatever it may be, he's posting. And so um, I, I I heard like, oh, you know, fly me out. Simply because he's 6'2". Simply yeah. because he's 6'2". Simply that kind of a trap. Right. <laughs> and it's like, and don't take me out on a date to TGI Friday, Take fly me out. Like if you're not flying me out. And although these are being reels and TikToks that are jokes, people are actually believing that. Yeah. So they might have a guy that want to take them out to a dinner. That's not enough anymore. Like if you're not flying me out to Tulum, you're not flying me out to, you know, Antigua, then who are you? You're not, you're not somebody that I want to do life with because everybody wants to travel and do these things, but realizing that you still got to deal with the personality on the trip. So might, he might be able to afford, let's say this guy, he can afford it. And then he's checking out all other women the whole time. He doesn't even, he's not attentive to what you say. He doesn't know you, doesn't want to care about your dreams or who you are. And now you become just a poster girlfriend or a poster wife, but you're not really building an integral part of your future with this person. And so we have to ask ourselves internally, what matters? Like when I think about talking to people or I'm talking to guys, it's really, I'm trying to hear your heart. I'm trying to hear your, your angst, your traumas or things, things that I got to deal with. And as well as what is your hopes and aspirations beyond what you're saying? So I'm looking at your actions. Like if you tell me you're going to pick me up, like, are you always late? And do I have to do I have to always be like, dang, that Negro is always late. He's always late. He's always like 915 and it's always 10 o'clock. And so I have to adapt to that. Or someone that can pay the check at the dinner, but the whole time was on their phone. They didn't really pay attention to anything that I was saying. Like you paid the dinner. Yeah, we went to the nicest restaurant, but you weren't even present because you were doing all these other things. And these are the things that are I call them death by paper cuts and marriages. Like you mm. pick someone based off only the things that they could provide physically and materialistically, but they don't even know you. And they really honestly don't care to know you. You're just mm. another piece of booty that I can pump my seeds into and not necessarily, it's, it's just that raw. 
but I don't necessarily want to ride with you. You're just an accessory. So if the I don't image. Wanna, yeah, the image. And so people say things like, I would rather cry in a BMW, like dumb stuff. Like you're just dumb, like dumb. Cause you don't understand what it is to be broken and hurtful if you're saying that. You don't understand that after acquiring much, if you're not okay with you, it doesn't matter. Like I think Lauren said all the time, those, those metrics that he's building in terms of money, they're add-ons, but he's actually happy with his life. I don't think I've ever asked Lawrence, like, how are you doing? And he's like, that was a really bad day. Like, it's mostly like work or something, but it's not like, but you could tell he's internally content. And when you look at for people that you want to be with, you want to see, can they be content within themselves? Or are, do you have to be their happiness? Do you have to pump them and make them feel that good for, good for who? Like, you have to keep telling them, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. And it's still never enough. I mean, of course you want to support your man emotionally. You want to, you know, make sure that, hey, I'm supporting you. I want, if you're having a hard day, but there are some people that are so egotistical that if the conversation is not centered around them, they don't feel okay. But yet, oh yeah, he can take me on a trip. Yeah, he can buy me my BBL in Dominican Republic because I got to change myself so that he can accept me. Yeah, I got to do all these things, but are you okay with you? And when we talk about money and we talk about judging men, based on salary, we're just the same as them as basing women on their butt size and their um, their waist to booty ratio. We're just the same. Mm -hmm. We don't wanna say that, but that's exactly what it is. Because if men were parading around the same information, we would not be happy. We would be saying that they're um, misogynistic, they're egotistical, we would give them all the type of names. But I see my fellow sisters doing the same checking off a box as if this is an application to the government to work for them. Like this literally like check off the box to all those, like I, when you work in like government, they got to go all to these backgrounds and all these checks and checks and boxes. We're literally doing the same thing and measuring people on things that in 20, 30 years won't matter. It won't matter to the relationship. It won't matter to the fact that your husband's so absent-minded that the children don't even know that their father loves them because he doesn't know his own value. Mm. There's so much to talk about, but you can't judge people off of those sticks and think that you're going to have a, a life that's prosperous. It might, mm. you might have the home and the car, but you won't be happy. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, there was, there's a video in which you ever seen a guy named Abba and preach. They got like a, a YouTube shot. It's kind of a, I think he's Ethiopian and the other guy is like a Haitian uh, Canadian. So they're on YouTube. They're they're pretty renowned. Like they they just do reactions all the time. And he was on another show, and and he talked oh, about I know it. You're talking about. Yeah, and he talked about it. Like I think his name, the the one that's Abba. Um, he talked about it. Says a lot of people. He hears it all the time that people are always trying to set. You know, I don't want to settle. I don't want to settle for a guy that that is you know making a certain amount of money. I don't want to settle for a guy that is not this um, how tall. I don't want to settle for a guy that's not you know showering me with this this this. And he said it, but. But you never hear people say, I don't want to settle for a guy that, that doesn't have a, a decent character. Like, you don't hear what matters anymore. You just hear people don't mm -hmm. want to settle for things that are really, you know, like, they're out there. There's stuff that, that you know, to be honest, it, it makes other people feel better about, you know, you, but it doesn't make you feel better. There's some people right now at brunch, and I was kind of picking on brunch, like, <laughs> that, that are unhappy, like, chronically unhappy. You know, you, you're not even there because you want to, because your homegirl told you to go, because you think that's where society wants you to be. And it's maybe, and then you're also told by everybody else, this is where you're going to meet somebody that you're supposed to be with. Let's say that person wasn't there. Then you wasted your entire 20s, your 30s, looking for somebody in a place that he's not at. Maybe because you're not supposed to be there too. Mm -hmm. So we have these situations where money and relationships cross paths. But in truth, people aren't really finding the, the first relationship that matters, which is, which, is, which is the relationship within themselves. If you don't have that relationship, it doesn't freaking matter how much money you have. You will blow it. You'll be depressed and you still kind of, you know, your life will still be a wreck. Um, but if you're truly, truly content, truly, truly like um, happy with whatever station you're at, maybe 40K, 60K. I know people that made, made no K. <laughs> And yet, yet they're still okay. Like they're still like, their life is still amazing. I've been in places where people never made more than $20,000 USD per year. 
but yet they're, 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 there's a smile on their face. There's, you know, there's food on the plate, on the plate that we can all share. There's a conversation to be had. And there's relationships that's been in the game 60, 80 years. Like it's normal. When people say, you know, you know, as being a married guy, when I've seen <laughs> people say, well, I'm happy we made it to the third year. Oh man, we made it to the fifth year. I'm like, man, you, you, yeah, you just, you know, it's, it's kind of like you barely make it. And then you're like, oh, thank God that we made it to this year because you can, <laughs> how are you going to make it to the, the 10, the 30, the 40? To me and, you know, and my wife, at least for me, I can't speak for her and how she interprets, you know, our relationship. I'm fine. I, we don't fight. We don't bicker. We don't argue. Um, even if we have this, you know, like moments in which we, we kind of, I guess, disagree, it's fairly quick. It's fleeting, at least for me. It's nothing in which I'm going to take and I'm going to die with. You know, it's like, it's not that important. It's not that serious. It's not that bad. And that's what I always remind myself. And I hope I remind her as well. Getting to yeah. a year two, three years, I'm not the one to go, you know, celebrate it and parade it around because it's, <laughs> this shit's supposed to be normal. It, you know, it used to be normal. It used to be the most normal shit ever. Like, it's like you making it to 20 years. It's like, eh, you know, everybody else made it to 20 years. What, 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 what are you trying to get a cookie for? You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You making it to six months, you know, it's like it's too much now. We've added so much to relationships that we're, we damn near made it like either unattainable or just, you know, it's like the thing you lose taste for, value for. You don't care for mm -hmm. the taste and the flavor anymore. Because there's so much to be had, with, especially for guys. Like, I, I understand guys that don't want to be in relationships. We got to think about, you know, Valentine's Day, some other woman's day, some other woman's day in between, some, <laughs> some anniversary day, some the international <laughs> women's day. The, oh, I got to go with my friends to, to brunch days. I have to go with my friends to the, to the party and you have to show up two days. Like these are all these requirements that make relationships almost intolerable to the normal man. The normal man is the man that doesn't give two shits about going to any of those things. And he's still very happy. He, he could be out there in the backyard, you know, Sunday, you know, like he's doing the, the, the lawn, you know, he's fixing something. That's where he gets his kicks from. But we're, we're getting to the point where women are dictating to other women, this is how relationships should be. And at that point, I'll tell the women straight up, then date another woman. Ooh, see, like, really? Because all these guys, really? you know, the, the decent, I'm just going to be honest, the decent guy doesn't give two shit about getting dressed and going to the next brunch. It's not that serious. What's up with you on these brunches? No, you I'm just using it. I'm just, I'm just brunches. using it as an example. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm using it as an not example. Not with a brunch. I'm like, I'm just, hey, hey, I'm just using it as an I'm example. I'm coming to town, Lawrence, and I want to go to I'm brunch. Just, see, okay? see, brunch. see, see, there you go. Like, you know I'm just saying, you know, like, maybe the guys don't want to do that. To me, like, <laughs> this is, I'm just trying to use it as a segue to say that society is filled with different people, and not everybody wants to follow that one specific um, string of music. Right, right. I would say this is, um, and I, I haven't even expressed this to him yet. Um, so when we went out, he is shorter than me. <laughs> Place it out there. <laughs> um, I'm five now. I think he's five eight or something. So I had on heels. But the way that he carried himself, leading the way, holding my hands, leading the way, he he carries himself like as if he was six two. Right. There, there was nothing in, in terms of the difference of height, like he didn't care, just having a good time. Um, he told me he's really good at ping pong and we were at this location where people were playing ping pong, you know, and he was playing ping pong with this random stranger, this white girl. And they were just you can see the joy in his face is doing something that he loves. Right. And that's what I look for. So and I can I can tell that he's content with whatever as long as he's having a good time and being around people that he cares for right so there's there's are things that you have to discern when you're dating and looking at different aspects yeah he, he flew down here he got his own, own hotel but the things that we did in between you have to kind of look at um who he is as a person because with or without you in the presence you know in your courtship this is a person you could possibly you know spend your life with or create this life together with and I, I look for those quality of things. And, um, and I appreciate that he's himself. You know, randomly going to a stranger, I'm up next. I'm going to play ping pong, <laughs> table ping pong. And that was like so cool to look at, 
you know, and uh, and I appreciate those things, you know, and I'm and I'm open up my dating palette, short, tall, white, black, whatever, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's it's just a good time for me. But I'm I'm, I'm realizing is that men are very simple, very simple. If I bring up a, a conversation we had, you know, last week, you probably don't can't tell, but if I bring up a serious something that I was expressing to him, then he'll know, right? So there's different things that we kind of have to decipher as women to know that the bigger picture of it all is can this be a partner for you in the long term? What really matters matters, right? And the small nuances that we are being influenced by really shouldn't matter at all. Um, this particular person is uh, a little younger, slightly, <laughs> than me, but I'm looking at uh, the skills and everything that he has built himself up to this point, right? Mechanic, aviation, like th the world is an oyster. Like he could probably do anything that he wants after leaving the military. So I, I look at those things and, and look at the opportunities and where he will fit and what, whatever that he choose to be happy. So I, I encourage women, yo, really explore the palette and, and look at things that matter, really matters. Like genuinely look, look at the person for their heart, for their character, who they really are. I'm gonna I'm add this for the guys, you know, I know the lovely about to jump in, but for the guys themselves as well, um, and maybe even for the ladies, you know, ultimately, this is a person that's going to be with your child if you choose to have kids together, right? Or there might be the, you know, the, the second half of the gene pool that goes into your child. <laughs> so you might want to make sure that they're not necessarily trash people. They're not people that are, aren't motivated to live. So I don't, you know, if God bless, you know, me and Doreen with um, kids and whatnot, and it is what it is, but I, I don't want those kids to really push. I don't want people that are quiet. I don't want people that are timid. I want people that I want to explore and people that I will, will try to be the, the best version of their true selves, not the version that they think society wants them to be. And that's why I pick on sometimes some of these social things that we do, because those things are fairly new. Uh, at the same time, like for me, shoot, if, if my kid wants to travel, I'm like, I'm all in. <laughs> like I'll be looking at my goddaughter every time like, when are you ready to go? Because I'm ready to go. <laughs> like, I don't know if you're 100% yet or you want to travel this way, you don't want to be by this life, just let me know. And that's the kind of you know energy that I want to put into the world. I want to have relationships with people, not just um, romantic relationship with my wife per se, but also like relationship with other people to say like the guy that you met, like he just kind of picked up a, a ping pong. Maybe he wanted to learn. Maybe he already knew how to play. Maybe he just made a new connection. Imagine now, you know, let's not, not say that you're going to imagine it, but let me imagine it that y'all have kids and now you have a kid that's outgoing, that wants to go into the world, that wants to engage, and that want to be the best version. And that's because of the experiences that they're going to they're gonna have from you or from the other person that you're with. Without it, let's say if you have a person that just be on the couch all day, every day, maybe your kid's going to be on the couch all day, every day, <laughs> like that you're, you're running that risk with the person that you end up being with. And for guys, just make sure if it's just a girl that just wants to, you know, be paraded around, you know, buy, buy stuff. Maybe that's your taste in women. That's all good. But just know that that's, that's going to be, you know, what you progenerate, progenerate into the world, or if that's even a word, <laughs> what you add into the world, what you kind of bring into the world, no matter the legacy, it's going to always be somebody that's more so about materialism versus than growth. Mm. The thoughts. Progenerate. I don't know. I'm just making up words. I don't, I don't know. That's the word. I'm looking like, mm, I don't know. That's the word. There's a progenerator. Right? <laughs> progenerator. I don't know. Like it's a progenerator. I, I, I don't even right think that's now. the right even term for this. Like, I, I don't think you're using you know, the right concept. Oh, completely. But, okay. Completely throw that one out. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's progenerate. Let's that right quick. <laughs> I went to well, a, a P, what, what, what's it called? A PW, PWI? That's what, you know, I know you went to HBCU, <laughs> so it's different. But we, we learn, you know, different um, languages, like Latin roots. So, you know, we know different stuff. I know you went to HBCU. No, we, we you, learned, might we, know. We you might not know. You might not know. You might not know. You might not know. Just kidding. Just kidding. No shit. But yeah, so the, 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 the dating scene for me is, is pretty cool. Um, 
just getting to know a great person or people. <laughs> we shall see about that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm in a good space, to be honest with you. I'm really in a good space, not only because I'm actively dating, but I, I took a chance to not take a long hiatus um, after my breakup, right? Um, it, it was tough, but after, you know, a uh, tough love from uh, Lawrence over here <laughs> to kind of get up <laughs> and, and get out there a little bit. But just just others and support. Um, I, I'm in a good space um, to actively date, but to also look at healing with myself as well. Uh, working out, being amongst friends, being amongst uh, family, and just finding, finding that balance and knowing who I am, right? Even before uh, that relationship um, ended. So I have to get back to that um, Atlanta. And, and, and I'm happy I'm slowly getting to that. And I don't want to lose that anymore. That's good. That's good. Atlanta's updating. I'm out here paying attention, taking notes. <laughs> you know. I like lo uh, Lovely Never Say Her uh, status. Um, yeah, I'm right. dating. Uh, Lawrence is in a. Uh, that's uh, that's, that's how rich people stuff, man. Rich people don't <laughs> talk about these things. They all you all you hear about rich people is when they get married. After they got married, that's, that's when it. you hear about it. All, all I you am hear that about later. person, but since you guys are close, you guys would have gotten an invitation. So. Uh, yeah, you know, it's gonna be y'all's here. It's a small gathering. It is. It will be. <laughs> close it friends. will be. It, it literally will be a um, small gathering with close friends, but, you know, I'm not here paying attention. I, I got to um, make sure for your wedding, lovely. I got to be super fly if I'm still single. Yes, please. No, <laughs> it's going to be some high value. <laughs> <laughs> high value man. <laughs> high value man out there. High value man. But, um, no, but this is good. I actually wanted to ask a question um, to both of you in, in Atlanta. When it comes to the idea, Lawrence will be good because Lawrence has already has done it. Atlanta, what are your thoughts on it? So we talked about like the dating scene and just like how money, you know, could be perceived. But I really want to talk about like practical things as well. What are some questions that we should be asking, right? Because we don't want to say, hey, you don't necessarily need to shoot for somebody six figures, but somebody might be in complete debt. They might not be good with their money management. How do you deal with those things? Should people be considering, well, can we improve this or should you be running to the hills? Like, what are your thoughts on like early conversations around money? Yeah, I, I think you just have to fill it out, right? Um, I was really transparent with the person I'm seeing about how much I make. Um, and for Florida standards, I guess that's somewhat middle class. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't feel it, but um, I, I think you just have to fill out to see where they are. But for me, I like to be transparent. Um, with, you know, money issues or money struggles, whatever I'm like going from. So there's a end of the trip or possibly early trip of um, a trip that we were discussing internationally, but b due to the scheduling, it seems so um, the ticket prices <laughs> may be a little bit higher for my budget. <laughs> and um, I had to really express that to him like, hey, I have this to pay, I have that to pay. And the longer we wait, doesn't look like this trip is going to happen, right? Um, so doing doing that, I think in, in between those um, things, it's, it's, it's really just seeing, seeking out the information, not directly asking, but allowing it to happen naturally too. Because I'm not telling him, you know, how much you make and whatever. I never asked him that question. But because I was transparent and I always been transparent with him when it comes to money, especially... Um, you know, we're long distance. So we, you had to kind of discuss about money, <laughs> you know, when it comes to flights and scheduling and, you know, hotels and whatever you're doing in between, like, you know, excursions, whatever. So um, I, I, I tried to express that to him that, you know, I had priorities and, you know, scheduling in advance really worked for me because I could get my money together to do so. Um, but hearing what he is going through in his, you know, journey or, um, things he's trying to pay off or whatever that kind of give me a good idea of where the person is because we're we're very early into this courtship so I, I can't you know think that he'll be all in to just tell me how much he's making how much debt he doesn't have student loans so awesome <laughs> he doesn't have student loans um but those those sort of things that I, I feel like it, it just takes a little bit more time 
uh, depending on where you are in your relationship or in your dating um, level or whatnot, because some people are not as transparent. Like I'm, I'm, I'm fully, you know, open and like, this is my struggle. This is what I'm still trying to figure out. And um, let me know what your thoughts and feelings on this, like really place myself in a situation. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But um, I, I really try to fill it out what a person is. So Lawrence, what about you? I'm about to say something profound, you know, just gonna let people know. Um, we have to start learning to listen to people without words. Uh, meaning that you're just, you're paying attention, you're being focused. And this is why I was kind of adamant about people not dating multiple people because they lose the ability to listen without words. Meaning you can see through their actions, you see through their, their you know, the way that, you know, their facial expressions, their momentum, how they act and react. And it does change. And and that should be enough. I don't have to ask, I didn't have to ask uh, my wife, you know, how much did she make? What did that? Da, da. I was just paying attention to her, pay attention to how she moves. Um, the first date we went on and the first official date, we went to Dave and Buster's and we get there and, you know, I'm, re I'm, I'm always ready to, you know, swipe that car. Let's get this going. Let's go in. And she, it was almost like she paused me and she's like, Hey, wait. And, and she's like, I, I found, and she whipped out her phone. She said, I found a, uh, a, um, a coupon for Dave and Buster's today. And it was, uh, it was like, I'm, I'm looking at her like, when did, when did she do this? She did this way before the, the date. Obviously she knew it was coming. And obviously she was like, hey, I don't want this guy to come out of pocket for the heck of it. And that to me, she may as well have sold just gold. <laughs> like it was in, it was like, it was done. It was like, I've never seen a woman slow you down enough, cared enough. Besides getting dressed, obviously women put a lot of, you know, into how they're getting dressed, whatever. And I, I, I get that. But there's another level that she went into where she literally said, hey, I don't want to just spend money on anything like that. This is just Dave and Buster's. Even at that level, it's priceless because she understood that whatever money that has been or we spend together now is going to be all money that we, you know, work on together later. She tre She treated that date as if it was, you know, this is the real, it was, this was not the playoff. This was the finals. You know, she's like, she's trying to really play. This is not like, Hey, I'm doing a scrimmage. I'm just whatever. It's like, you're dating with a purpose. You're making sure the person understands that, yeah, you're in this. And then you're not necessarily in there for their money. Later on, I believe like, I want to say like a year or two later after we started dating. And that's when, you know, I was actually going to the, um, the trip to Europe. And she just started tagging along and we went to a 12 countries in 14 days. And she was like, how, how am I going to pay for it? I'm like, I got this. Because you have proven throughout the time, way before then, that you are worthy of me spending this, this money on you. I don't have a, I didn't have a, a, a care. I didn't have like a reservation because you've already proven it. And she's proven through the, the time that we were together. After She was listening sometimes to what I was saying about financial literacy. And she started kind of even talking to her sisters about budgeting, seeing the, the the benefits of it. And even she was way before me, she was trying to structure, structure her money, you know, the best she could. So it's through what she did in the process of like us going or not necessarily, you know, pressuring me to say, hey, let's go to this random date or that random location or that expensive stuff. Because ultimately it afforded us the opportunity to go on 12 countries in 14 days. It was great. It's probably the one of the best memories I have in my life, driving the south of France, stick shift, going to Monaco. I, I'm looking at everybody like, y'all don't, I know how to get to Monaco from Nice. Y'all don't know how to do that. Y'all can't ride like me. Y'all can't, like, can't ride stick shift in reverse in uh, in Scotland, out here looking at castles. You, you, you're, not, you're not in that mediocre stuff. That's, you know, that's it, it's like a whole stuff. other level here. And it was so much fun because she recognizes, <laughs> at least in her actions she showed me she recognized what was important to her and what was important to her is our you know is our character is our chemistry together is you know what how we treat each other the respect we give to each other or the space and the grace that we give to each other as well because there are some guys that are are looking at women and say hey she better be doing all this 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 and keeping herself a certain way that's a lot of pressure for women women feel it there's a lot of women that do the, the, the inverse. They say, hey, you better be you, you know, taking me to every you know, high-end restaurant in, in DC. If you ain't doing that, you ain't, you, ain't ish, you ain't ish. And that's also problematic. I even got into conversation with groups of women in front of my face 
telling me that, yo, going on coffee dates is trash or going to like a free event. Like, let's say I was in a free event talking to other ladies at the free event that they showed up to saying that this would be insufficient of a date because the person didn't cough up some cash. It doesn't make any sense. Because the date, the whole point of the date is to get to know the other person. The value of the date is not important at all. It's literally exactly. of no consequence. You could have went to a free, and it was a free thing at the African American History Museum. Beautiful space. We're listening to some stuff. We're getting inspired. And then they turned around and said, you know what? A free date? That's trash to me. That means he, he's not willing to. But then back. again, we, we discussed that, Lawrence. That's your experience with. Yes. Some bougie woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Yeah, 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 what I said. Women, yeah, there is. There, we but, don't have that. but, you know, I talked to, you know, being a guy, I talked to a lot of other guys in other different places. And these other people, different places, those guys also have similar experiences. So it's not just an isolated, just DC. I've seen it in uh, Florida. If you're not dressed a certain way, a certain way at the club, sure. you trash. <laughs> like you, yeah, you're not okay. You're still you just going to the club, right? Yeah, like you, if you don't have the 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 tee go, going down to the to the ankles, like you trash. <laughs> like your your t-shirt. What's going down to the? Oh. I'm just I'm just kidding. What the? Link. I'm just <laughs> saying. Know, she's like, what the heck? But ultimately, we have to learn to just listen without the words and just understand people can share who they really are through their actions. You don't have to pop quiz them with some kind of, hey, how much money you got? Oh, how much student loan debt you have? How much credit card debt you got? You could tell if she goes out every weekend, she probably don't have that much money, bro. <laughs> like she, she goes out every weekend. It's not cheap. <laughs> like, I don't care if she's getting in here and there for free or maybe get some free drinks, getting dressed, getting the Uber, getting whatever. That's a $200 weekend. Easy. In our 20s, $200 weekends was an easy weekend. Mm -hmm. I agree. I multiply by, by, by what, 50, 50 weeks <laughs> every week by 50 weeks that's a whole lot of money just like and then you know generally we're out of school out of 20s you're making like 40k you know mm -hmm. you know max 45 maybe 50 not a lot of people are pulling in this six figure stuff even the women aren't so all of it costs money and if you're not you know managing your money well you could tell by the way the, per the car the person drives the the, the office the person keep how many rotations? Because some ladies used to do like, hey, one outfit. If I, if somebody's seen it, that you may as well burn the outfit. I'll never wear it again. Wow. <laughs> it's some wild wow. stuff out there in these streets. But, I see. I, I hear. <laughs> whew, I, it, get, it gets pretty emotional. But, you know, hey, we're at the end of this uh, episode, obviously. We've gone. We've provided you a lot of information. I don't, I don't want to give it to Lovely because she's the one asking this question. Can you recap for us? and see what can people take away from this uh, episode? Or did you take away anything? Oh yeah, I took away a lot. My heart was touched this episode. I felt all the love, the ups and downs that resulted into beautiful love. Man, guys, this episode was really good. Um, thank you guys for listening. Love, money, relationships. And you know, what would an episode on the financial Rio be without me telling you actionable steps? You, you guys gotta just gotta get used to this, okay? So number one is self-reflection. Look at your values, look at what you're portraying, and look at what you're intaking as your set of values and characteristics. For example, if you find yourself pinning some, some, some cute couples and not understanding their backstory, you might want to check your heart. You might want to check your heart because you might have some unrealistic expectations coming into the dating world. Number two is money is a tool. It's a tool. Remember? It's a tool. So you can use it, you can grow it, you can multiply it. But money and replacing it with people, two different things. Stop treating people as ATMs or bank accounts or seeing people with dollar signs on their head. And you know how when you go to the um, Yelp and they have that one dollar sign and they have the two and the three and the four? People are not like that. We're multidimensional, right? So somebody might be struggling. That doesn't mean you shouldn't give them a chance. But having open dialogue is really, really important. And also ask yourself, are you even open about your own money situation? Like if we ask you what your network was, if we're having a conversation, would you even want to be open? And if you feel anxiety about that question, it might be time for you to check your finances. Number three, the best thing that I said, um, I, I heard today was um, Lauren's beautiful story, is that people are not looking only about what you do, but they're looking on what you say, but they're looking at your actions. Instead of always looking about what, what is in the dating pool, ask yourself, who are you coming into that pool? ask yourself those questions. What actions are you putting in? 
Who are you in terms of your characteristics? What are the things that you need to improve on? And number four, I'll just add this one as a caveat, is if you're listening to the financial drill, you're already leveled up. Why? Because you're being exposed to different thought processes and values. And we, we might just want to toot our own horns that these were gems, these were classic advice that you can take for yourself, take to your girlfriends. And one thing that I'm, gonna, I'm going to advise you to do, play this episode around other people. What are some of the things that we were saying about high value men, high value women that are just not true? We need to be able to know that growing a family together Oh, I'm so bad at this multitasking thing. So when I get these text messages or these messages, Lawrence, I'm just going to let Lawrence say himself because it's just so good. Lawrence, Lawrence is not going to say it. He's not going to say it. So you can have four, $4 sign Yelp and a one star average review. Ooh, you could be pricey, but the reviews are trash. That's what he want to say. I'm going to give you on the hood terms. You're expensive, but you're trash. Okay. So let's not, let that not be you. Let that not be you. We, we hope that you can match the expectation that you're bringing. Don't wear the Louis Vuitton, but inside you're worth very little because you haven't let us see the beauty, the beautiful things, the more characteristic things, the integrity. So this is a good episode. I hope that, right. Just go ahead and steal it, Atlanta. Just, just go ahead and stack it up. But anyways, this is a beautiful episode. As always, we appreciate you listening and make sure you leave us a review. Since we were talking about these reviews on Yelp, if this is helping you, please leave a review because that's how we get more, more notoriety and Apple and Spotify and all that good stuff. So please leave a review and we'll just wrap up with everybody saying where you can find them, what's up, what's going on. I'll go ahead and start and I'll pass it to Raton. Whoever's the last person, just wrap up the episode in a very clean way. Thank you. They're like, nope, they're not going to wrap it up. They're just going to tell you where they're going to find find them. It's okay. But it's Lovely Mordellas. You can find me on Instagram at Lovely Mordellas. Um, and I'll let you know when there's more things coming up. Hey, guys. Thanks, so guys, for tuning in and listening to the Relationship and Money episode today on TFG. Um, my name is Atlanta. Once again, you can find me on Instagram. It's Atlanta. So that's I-T-S underscore Atlanta. A-L-A-I-N-T-A. And also check out my YouTube when you get a chance. Atlanta, Naturalizing Money Talk. And we're discussing everything in between. So let me know what you guys think of the content. And like um, Lovey said, hit up with that review. We love to hear your thoughts and um, everything that you think of TFG, the financial grio. We out, Lawrence. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, you can find me at the neighborhood finance guy, the entire word.com or on IG, where I talk smack to a lot of people in 305 Day County style. But ultimately, um, yeah, you can steal anything that I said, you could quote it, you know, out there, put it in the streets. But ultimately, learn to listen to others without words. And that's the thing that I want to leave you with. And hopefully, you have a lovely day, a lovely uh, week. And you make sure you visit um, any one of us and ask us some questions and let's keep this dialogue going because money and wealth and health is all very important to the way we live. This is why we call ourselves the financial group. Yo. Thank you for listening to the Financial Griot Podcast, powered by the Wealth Builders Collective.